Hey everyone, welcome back to Comic Shop Talk. I'm gonna talk about two sales we ran recently. The difference between uh, a successful sale and a non-successful sale. So recently we ran a comic book sale. I had been stacking up, com I, as you guys know, I talk about it all the time that I, I buy collections, I buy as many as I can find. And I've been stacking up some books since before COVID, filled a whole second bathroom and part of my basement with comics. You know, there's a time you gotta just uh, blow them out. You gotta get rid of some uh, so you can put cash back into the bank so you can buy more collections, so you can get the big books, right? About a three week lead, we started doing some advertisement on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, it's great because you make an ad on Instagram and it goes on your Facebook and then you do an ad on Facebook and it'll go over to your Instagram. Uh, for, the, for the comic book sale, we did 50% off all books, all of our books in the entire building except for our wall books, which you see behind me. They were 25% off, still a great deal when you're talking about a thousand dollar book. $250 off is pretty good. We brought all the books up from the basement. We got them all out of the second bathroom. We put them all out and the books were not in alphabetical order. They were just uh, a lot of times collectors in the business call it soup and it was a lot of digging. So if you didn't like digging, don't come. So they came out. When we opened the doors at noon, uh, we had about three or four guys. We had people all the way to when we closed at six o'clock. In fact, we had people still looking at six o'clock and we had to tell them that was it. Super successful. I was hoping to sell around a thousand books and we sold probably about 2,000 books, just under or right at 2,000 books. It was a very good money day for the business and it was very successful. One of the things I did on Facebook is I've joined a lot of the community groups where you can just post events. I post our sales in the, on those event channels and they haven't been uh, deleting them or removing them. So they've been going up and they get a big reach. Those community groups have uh, a really good following. Uh, some of them are about flea markets. Some of them are reseller groups. Some of them are just uh, community mom groups. So yeah, we went on there and super, super successful. Uh, of course, we also told all of our comic book people as they came in those three weeks, hey, listen, on this, on this Sunday, we're gonna do a 50% off. These are books that haven't been out for sale, you know, so you're gonna get first shot at them. And it, it went really, really well. We're gonna do it again, it was so successful, and we're gonna follow that same model. Three week lead time, 50% uh, off. One of the things we're adding is to maybe get people in earlier so I don't have people here at six o'clock just starting looking. Every hour we're gonna remove two boxes. So I had about, 50 to 75 boxes out. There'll still be a lot of stuff to go through, but it still generates that there may be something I don't get to look at. And, you know, people will think that I'm gonna be removing the best boxes first. I, I, haven't, I still haven't searched these boxes since the, the sale. So uh, they are still gonna be kind of unsearched. So other than the stuff that sold the first sale, I still had stuff in the, in the basement that I couldn't bring up that I didn't have room for, so I have about another 10,000 books to put out for the next sale. Fast forward to the next week, we decided, hey, that was so great, let's have a toy sale because uh, I don't know if you, I've talked about it, I know, but if you haven't been watching the show, I made a huge toy buy, probably about 4,000 pieces of toy. So we put out about 600 to 800 pieces. We did 25% off. I didn't do a three week lead time because it was only the success of the comic book sale that made me want to do the toy sale. So we only had a week's time. I didn't share it to the community Facebook pages. I just forgot because time was so short. I usually don't do the sharing to those communities until three days beforehand because people do forget. If you do it three weeks in advance, like teaser, reminder, and then final reminders a couple of days before. And that, uh, I didn't do that reminder and I didn't send it out to anybody. I did sell some stuff. Uh, there was a few people that came in specifically for the sale that knew about it. The weather wasn't 
perfect for a sale like that. It was super, super hot out, really humid in New York that day. If it was just humid, I probably would have been good, or if it was just hot, I would have been pretty good. But the combination in New York really keeps people home in the AC. Rain would have even been really good. I would have loved to have some rain uh, to break up that heat, and then people would have wanted to do something indoors and, and would have come and rifled through. And it was, you know, it's perfect for Christmas time. These were, these are not regular toys. These were all, not all of them were vintage because they were pro probably started in the 2014s, but they went back from there into vintage. They were definitely all collectible. Uh, some of them were like very affordable for kids. There was a lot of Marvel stuff at the 10 and $15 range, which means you would have got them for 750 to $11. So great stocking stuffers for those small three and a uh, quarter Marvel figures. I also had the GI Joes and I had the GI Joes from $10 GIOs. Ah. <laughs> GI Joes, wow, I couldn't even talk. But yeah, from $10 to like $80. So there was some real collectible ones in there if you had somebody, but it failed. And it failed because I didn't put in the work, I didn't put in the time. Plan out your sales. Very rarely can you just throw a sale up and, uh, for walk-in traffic and it take off. Be prepared when you're doing a sale with your advertising, your pricing, uh, everything just to make the experience so great for your buyers. And you'll get to, your sales will get to be known and then people will look for them. They'll be like, oh, when is, when is uh, the shop gonna do in the next sale? Man, I, I missed out or, or man, I did so well on that last sale. Listen, I, I know guys, we had guys buy $400 worth of comics on the 50% off sale. And I know they walked out of here with $1,000 to $1,500 worth of books. Um, I said it was 50% off. I did 90% of it out of my head. I was not looking up that many prices because I know how much people hate that. But not being prepared, again, is on me, not on my customer. So I did 90% of the stuff out of my head. Most books went for two to three dollars a piece. And that was, I was figuring those books were probably five to $10 books. I did have some stuff priced. Those were truly half price. Funny thing is most customers steered away from the price stuff. They really felt they were getting the deal on the stuff that was unpriced. But in the business, nine years, been around comics since I was seven. I mean, I've got a pretty good idea of, of the key issues. Are there some stuff that I don't know about? Yeah, yeah, there is. With the cost of manpower and the cost of my time to look up every single book and, and what the customer would feel like having to look. These guys had stacks, brother, like big stacks. So they got deals. They got real good deals. But I also got rid of a lot of comics, a lot of comics, and we had a really great day. And it's, it's worth it. If you try to get every penny out of every book, your place turns into a museum. You know, you'll sell a little bit but you won't sell enough to turn the books to have the cash to buy the collections to get the real books, right? If you're holding out on a $20 book to get that full 20 bucks, you know, you're, you're missing out on that $500, $1,000 book. That's my purpose in that sale was to move books out. Now, on the toy sale, everything was priced because I don't know toys as well as I know comics, so we priced everything. That's why we didn't put out any more than like 500 to 800 pieces. Um, I had somebody working on that for two days. They did for two days. They did nothing else but price them uh, and then put the price on them. You know, look them up because there was a lot of look. We found us a lot of stuff that had to go to eBay. They like we couldn't even put them out. They were, you know, $500 action figures. So it was worth pricing all that stuff. Uh, I don't think that hurt the sale. I think that really would have helped the sale. I think the biggest problem was advertising and prep. We are gonna have another sale for toys. We're going to go with the model of advertising well in advance. Uh, the three week 
uh, that, that has been successful in the past for other things is gonna be successful for this. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'll let you guys know when I, we have it again. We're also gonna change the pricing a bit. We are gonna, we're gonna have a 50% off section and then 25% off section. We're probably gonna do it with stickers. We'll probably get some you know, dollar store stickers. Everything with a sticker will be 50% uh, off. The reason we went with 25%, I have a lot of new pops and some collectible pops that I really, I, the new stuff I, ca I can't do 50% off. It's below my cost. So I had to do 25%. But I think adding the sticker thing will allow us to sell some of the other toys that I bought at a very good price at 50%, sell them at 50% off and let my customers get some good deals and move some um, stock because we have a lot. Uh, it would be great. And then we're gonna try it with video games. When you're doing a sale, what I can tell you is prepare, prepare, prepare. Uh, get ahead of it, uh, sit down with, if you're, you're a soul guy, you don't have to sit down with anybody. Figure out what you're selling. Uh, we used to sell, put everything on the store in sale. When we were doing a sale, everything was on sale and different percentages for different stuff. It was like a headache when you get to the register, oh, you're buying a little bit of magic, oh, magic is 10% off, and then, oh, the toys are 25% off, or 15% off, and oh, the comics are 50%. It just makes for madness at the register, and confusion, and sometimes buyer's remorse, and it's just better to run something that is easy to understand, gets the people in, excites them, and gets them out. Because you want people to be able to flow through the store also. So if everybody's standing at the register waiting to be checked out, it's also not a good idea. So if you guys have any suggestions on sales, on things that's been successful for you, or sales you've went to that have been very successful, and how they ran them and how they did them, I'd love to hear it, put it in the, down in the comments section. With this, I mean, I talk about this pretty readily. Not only am I trying to help people who are starting out, I'm trying to get help to make it better and better. I want to be around a very long time because I think that comic book shops, comic book owners, are, uh, comic book store owners are stewards of the hobby. And we need to be making readers to extend the life of this hobby. Uh, speculators come in and out, investors come in and out. Uh, if they all drop out at the same time, uh, you know, we lose a lot of shops. Look in the 90s when, when, the bu when the bust happened, how many shops closed down. I mean, I'm sure you can find articles on it. I don't have the numbers on it. Maybe I'll take the time to look them up and show, tell you them, but everybody knows it, 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 it hit really hard. So it's important for us to make readers from youngest age to oldest age and everything in between. Have everything, uh, have different comics for everybody. And then make sure you're being good to the hobby, right? Because you can sell anything, right? If you want to make a huge profit, probably comics aren't the thing you should be selling anyway. But if you love comics, you do it right, you can make a living. So keep reading comics and open a comic store.